a little bit about you, man. I mean, how, how'd you end up meshing dentistry <clears throat> with rap? Like, where did it all start? I think originally, so, so I was born and raised in India. I was born and raised in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, which is west of India. And um, until I was 10 years old, uh, I was in India. But when I was 10, we moved to California. My, my mom's side of the family lived in America. So we moved to um, California. And at that time, it was pure hip hop. Um, that's when I got introduced to like Missy Elliott, Nelly, and Ludacris, oh, yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. You know? So um, fell in love with it right away. Started writing lyrics when I was like 12 years old. And like the first song I wrote about was Kobe Bryant, you know? Oh, and wow. so I was like 12 years old, man. And, and I was like the first person that I looked up to. Two first loves that I had was basketball and hip hop in America. Felt like an American kid in America. You know, it was always yeah, like yeah. a journey to like fit in. It was like so many things were new to me, culture yeah. shock and everything. So um, I guess that's the first like time. And I even told myself, I remember writing lyrics and I was like, man, I'm going to write these songs. I'm going to call the radio stations, tell them to like request play my song. And like, I'm going to be famous and this and that. But then life hits you. Um, yeah, exactly. And then, and then, and then like, as you get older, um, it, you know, I'm Indian. So like you get, you get guided towards going to follow your educational goals first. Um, so I was told basically to go into the medical field. That would be good for me. So I, and I agreed and I said, you know what, I, I see a lot of people around me that have gone to school who have not gone to school and what happens and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I decided myself, I was like, you know what, if I'm going to go into the medical field, I want to do what I want to do, which is be a dentist. Yeah. And, and um, everybody in my family is a dentist already. My uncle's a dentist. My uncle's really? um, brother's wife is a dentist. His two kids are dentists. Everybody's I was about to a ask dentist. You why dentistry, but yeah, that's that lady yeah. right there. <laughs> Yeah, so I saw their lifestyle, you know, the, the way they were living, the time, the schedule, the offices that they worked at, the, the ownership that they had of their own work yeah. that they did and stuff. So, so I felt like, you know what, dentistry is a good choice for me. Um, so I decided to go to India for five years when I was 18 years old. So the first 10 years of my life, I was in India. And then my formative, like 10 to 18 years, I was in America. I kind of became Americanized. And then right when I became Americanized, I chose to go back to India for five years. So um those five years in India, I graduated as a dental student. Um, even then, I was like into music and I, 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 I was doing like dance performances. I was doing like fashion shows, all that stuff. I was involved with like the culture of um, entertainment. And after that, but you know, dental school is really, really tough. You gotta be busy like doing work from all day, you know, so you don't get any other time to do. The five years that you were in India, mm -hmm. those five years you were in school completely? Like that's like, like the programs here, are I think um, in San Francisco, there's a three-year program, Pacific. Yeah. Um, uh, the other are four years. So in India, it's five mm -hmm. years. Yeah. So the difference is I got to go to India right after high school. That's what we can't do here. You can't go to dental school right after high school. Oh. So over there, you can wow. go to dental school right after high school. If you know what you want to do, you can just go straight to the specialty school. You know what I mean? Oh, that'd be great, man. So it's five years. So it's it's four-year program and five, uh, the fifth year is like internship, basically. Wow, that's that's great. Man. Yeah. Man. So that, that after amazing. those five years, I, I'm sorry? I said, that is amazing. I, it, that's so awesome to just <laughs> go from high school to whatever you want. I mean, it makes total sense. Because honestly, mm -hmm. I, I've always, I mean, I like school to, to a certain degree. There are certain subjects that I like, but I just hated that you had to take all these other classes. And I'm sure a lot of people do, you know, but uh, yeah. that's great, man. Yeah. And that's where you kind of slow down, right? It's like, you know what you want to do, but then you have to take all these classes that you're like, man, I don't want to go to this class. And then if you fail that class, it's like, you can't get ahead and do other things. Your GPA gets affected and all that stuff. So, so yeah. when, you, when you were going to school in India, were you still writing lyrics or still like thinking about that stuff? I mean, I, I see your videos on YouTube and dude, they're pretty dope. Like you got some pretty, you know, good music there. Thank you. Um, you know, I was always in love with like hip hop and stuff, but to be honest, I never really thought that I could rap. I never really thought that I could actually get on a microphone and sound good and do it that well. You know, um, it was kind of soul searching for myself to figure that out. I, I, I just didn't believe that that could happen so much that I never tried it. So mm -hmm. I always tried different things, meaning I was making music videos. So after five years of dental school, what happened was I came, to, I came back to America and now you have to apply for another uh, two years of school here in the US yeah. to get your license converted. Yeah. So um, while I was doing that, 
um, basically I started my own, that, that was when I first started doing like music videos and stuff like that, but not to my own songs. I, I started a brand basically called um, California's Very Own Motion. And I started making music videos of me dancing. What was it called again? Uh, motion, California's, California's Very Own Motion. Oh. Now I just go by motion after I did my own music. So uh, that was that was basically basically me doing music videos, like me expressing my love for hip hop or a particular song. Like for example, my my first three songs that I did was Drake songs. You know, all I did was basically got like a crew to film me. I wrote the, the scripts out. I storyboarded. I directed. I danced. I you know I did whatever you can. I went and bought props with my friends. And, like we came up with these ideas and we we filmed them and make a music made a music video out of it. The only thing that wasn't mine was the song. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, cool. yeah, because I didn't believe that I could do it. And then what happened was, um, then I got admission. Then I got admission in San Francisco University of Pacific, and and I, I I remember telling myself before getting the admission, I was like, look, if I get admission, cool, I'm gonna let go of all these motion music videos, all this stuff, and I'm just gonna focus on dentistry, and I'm gonna become a really good dentist, and you know, I'll have a good career. But if I don't get admission, I'm going to follow this like so hard and I'm going to become, you know, whatever it is that I need to become. I didn't, I still didn't think I could be a rapper. And then, um, when I got the admission, it was so inspiring to just achieve that huge achievement. Cause it's, it's really, really tough to get admission in, in the United States for an international dental student. It's like 20 seats for like a thousand people that apply or something. Wow. So luckily we got admission and it was so inspiring. I was like, man, I'm going to go harder to get what I would do. And then that's when I started like really thinking about what I want to do in life. And then I figured out within like the next six months that I want to start writing. And I, and I started writing and then I bought a microphone and I, that's, that's how it all happened. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. So <laughs> let me ask you a question. Do you have any patients that come into the office and like they know or seen your videos? Do they ever ask you to like spit at the moment right there? Like just. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody asked me to spit at the moment. And I kind of, don't do that anyways I, I'm, I'm more like a writer i like to write my things down i can't i can't freestyle i think yeah, yeah. i have a friend who does that shout out to a bro he's, a, he's an indian rapper just like me super talented guy and he anytime like you ask him to spit he'll just like go crazy and spit up like fire wow. bars you know i could never do that and I'm, I'm like so like i envy that you know like that's crazy i, I can never do that but um i do have some patients that know me like they're because so i i'm a pediatric dentist, basically um uh, oh. general dentist but for pediatric patients only so I get little kids all the time and if they come in with like headphones on or something, I'll always ask them what they're listening to, to like study the little generation of, of what they're growing up to, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then like, I do have some patients who are like, uh, you know, like the assistant's cousins or like uh, uncles and stuff like that. Yeah. And they bring their kids in and they've seen my Instagram and stuff like that. So they're like, oh, okay, I see you, I see you. <laughs> so do you have any um, any thoughts on how on how you're gonna take this uh, music, or were, were mm -hmm. you ever like mesh it with dentistry in a way that you um, just start rapping about dentistry? <laughs> I don't think so. People have asked me about that. I I think I take the rapping a little bit too seriously to start rapping about just dentistry. Yeah. You know, I know there's the the singing dentist and like. Uh, all these other people who are like dead yeah, yeah, yeah. basic and stuff yeah. like that but i'm really serious about my rapping so if i if, if i want to become a rapper i want to actually become like a rapper that's on the charts that's like yeah, doing tours yeah. and like i'd like to even yeah. transition my career of dentistry within the next 10 years into purely just doing music wow. you know um, at least not be a clinical dentist i'd rather be an owner dentist a business person yeah. behind the yeah. scenes of the dental office or something but I don't want to be clinically present more than 10 years, I feel. Right now, like I said, I miss work. I want to go back to work. I feel that way, so that's a good thing. But overall, the day, I, I feel like not being there anymore. Or the same thing goes to music. If, if, if I stop having fun with music, I, I need to stop it. You know, That's the main journey that I learned in my last 30 years. Well, it's just know, like, it do really what you sounds need to like do. you have a passion, passion there. For yeah, me. yeah. Wow. So what, what, what can we see from you within the next five years as far as uh, music? So coming up, so this was actually, as much as I miss going back to work, but this is my golden era. My wife just said, this is like AKB's golden era, huh? And I'm like, yeah, because like, man, imagine I started rapping like two years ago, 
like literally rapping like with the microphone and everything. And then um, I started releasing songs a year ago and I'm working Monday through Friday, right? Nine to five, nine to seven, nine to, you know, six thirty or something. And then I, I work 30 minutes away. So I come home late and then I, I spend time with my wife. And then some of the weekends I have to go to see my family in Los Angeles and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So like whatever time that there's left, which is night times on a Friday and a Saturday night, that's how I've built this music career just on that like all night, so, you know, like four or five a.m. I'll stay up recording and writing and yeah, listening yeah. to music and doing. So this quarantine was the best thing that, that could happen to me in that sense to give me time. And I've been recording like crazy. I've wrote like 10 new songs. I've recorded them. I've finished them. I've been having meetings with my engineer. Um, I have an album coming out on June 19th. That's the day um, I turned 30. So I'm really my first album. Um, and it's called Welcome to This Meeting, 21 songs on it. 21 songs? Yeah. And the, the reason why it's 21 um, is because I kind of took this approach differently. From, I've never seen this done before. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the first one that did it this way. I released like the first 11 songs off my album already. All the songs that have been released already are going to be on my albums. Because I feel like every single song is like a single that I make and they mash together. So like the last six or seven songs i've never released so at the same time i'm providing six or seven new songs in one day to the fan and at the same time i'm providing the first 12 or 13 songs that i already released that older fans have heard but the newer fans haven't so as a package i'm bringing the whole thing as welcome to this meeting this is my package yeah dude i can't (laughs) wait i'd love to uh pick that up and give it a listen yeah thank you man i'm excited for you to hear it yeah that is awesome wow so did you uh, get some writing in today? No, this is when I start. So, you know, 7 p.m., that's what I was saying. It's pretty early for me. I, I actually prefer it late. I, I usually start at, since it's quarantine, my schedule is like 11 or 12 um, at night, and I'll start, like, uh, recording, writing, listening to music, talking yeah. to fans, or posting something up or releasing something new, you know? So how do you, how do you deal with, like, spending all this time on your education, coming to the U.S., and then doing two years uh, in UOP, and Mm -hmm. then kind of figuring out that you're going to eventually transition from that. I mean, how does that hit you as far as, like, uh, time and sense of time? I mean, yeah, it was an achievement that felt like it was done. I, I did it. I became a doctor. You know, it wasn't a small thing for me to become a doctor. Not like I even still tell my wife and the assistants and everybody that, that are my friends, you know, that it's just like, I can't believe I take a drill in my hand and we're, we're literally drilling teeth and we're, we're doing like successful treatment on little kids that are like two years old, one and a half year old sometimes, you know, and like, I can't believe that I'm doing that. And it's such an inspiration for me. It's like, man, if I can do this, um, I can do anything. So I want to keep achieving more things in my life. And same thing happened with getting admission, um, passing like the national board dental exams, you know, because this, this style of working that I have right now came after me succeeding at dentistry. Mm-hmm. So dentistry is like a, a big, big milestone that I had to get over and be, become successful at to be able to do music. I feel. And that's what my ultimate message is as the Indian dentist rapper. People always ask me like, why do you put Indian in there? Why do you put the dentist in there? And I'm like, you know, I I didn't start off like that, but that became what uh, people caught on to. And so I was like, you know what? I've got people messaging me saying, bro, I'm also in dental school or I am a dentist and I've been a dentist for eight years, but I don't want to do this anymore. And I want to follow my path. I have people texting me who are doctors or are in medical school or architects or engineers or pilots or anything that they don't really want to do a hundred percent passionate about and they want to quit it and start rapping or dancing or acting or producing or doing that and i'm like you know what if you like it enough to stay there for a while graduate finish school or um you know earn some money become stable and then follow your dreams after that so that's the ultimate message behind why i say indian dentist rapper yeah now you know w- with what you're telling me um i'm kind of picking up that you know even in my culture uh, we have pressures of like doing certain things and uh, throughout life, you know, the whole uh, cultural cycle uh, and expectations. Would you say that a part of uh, you becoming a dentist was part of that, of what was expected of you? 
and then you kind of found and transitioned into what you what your passion is yeah say um it was expected and it was very well put into me as like advice and guidance from like my uncles my parents my brother you know everybody advised me to do this instead of like kind of forcefully do it so it, at the end of the day it was my decision because i did stay back after high school for one more year to figure it out to kind of be like you know what i don't want to go to india for five years i just turned 18 you know it's like I was, people wait to turn 18 in america and like go party after that right so yeah. why leave the country yeah. and go to india for five years i don't know how it's going to be like, like yeah, you know break so, do nothing for a year or two yeah yeah i actually took college classes i took like I took college classes and then I, I've, I started not going to those college classes. You know, I started ditching, I started watching movies. I started hanging out with friends and got into a couple of things. And I was like, you know what? I should go to India for five years and become a dentist, man. It'd be dope if I go over here for five years and come back as a dentist. That'd be awesome. And so that's how I decided. I was like, I, I should definitely go and do it. And I'm so proud that I did it, man. Because like I said, I would not be a rapper today. I would be talking to you today if I wasn't a dentist, you know, for. Yeah, 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 definitely. I really That's appreciate so it. Yeah. Awesome to have that under your belt and then just kind of transition to your. I've never, I mean, no, I, I, you're the first I've met that, you know, dentist, rapper, and you're from somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the opportunities are different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I am the only and first Indian dentist rapper, I like to say. I hope there's more, not only Indian and dentist, but like, you know what I mean? Like, mexican and architect rapper or dancer or whatever but that's the whole goal behind the scene you know and especially in india a country like where it's so so like it, i mean seriously people die by suicide because of the pressure that they have from the educational system and from their that. parents yeah yeah right so imagine like people are not needing to do what they want and things are much better in the last like 10 years i would say but mm -hmm. still happening Still happening people are committing suicide or i'm sorry i'm not supposed to say committing but um dying by suicide because of the fact that oh people are going to find out his grades are bad or parents are going to like you know kick him out of the house because he didn't pass this exam you know or what what, are, what is the society going to say about this kid and so people have so much tremendous pressure um to pass the educational system in india and i feel like uh, it takes the load off of a few people when they see people like me who are able to go to school, finish it, become stable, and then go and follow their dreams, you know? And I, it, yeah. in fact, it's actually better to take that route because there's one in a million chance that you're gonna become famous if you just stop going to school and you have no money to live and pay anything in your life. And you need money to promote your stuff. You need money to like make music videos and talk to engineers and make music and stuff like yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Now, you know, in the, in the Mexican culture, and you know, I didn't grow up in Mexico, but I know that, uh, for a fact, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my thought. But I do have another question for you. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, you you know who Gary Vee is? Gary Vaynerchuk? Oh. Um, I'm releasing a song called on, Hashtag On My Gary V soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like a lot of things that you're saying really sound like a lot of things that he says. I follow him yeah. real close and I like to say a lot of things that he says to other people because oh, his, that's cool. it, it just makes sense. Like he's so uh, blunt and straightforward about, you know, children I ask him, you know, my parents want me to do this, my parents want that. And he'll be like, fuck them, do what you want, you know? <laughs> so that's like, cool. That's the first time I heard anybody say that. Yeah. I would be like, oh my gosh, like that's crazy. Why would you say that to a kid? You know what I mean? But the yeah. more I listen to him, the more it makes sense. So everything you're saying just really makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm, I'm so excited to, uh, to keep following you, man. And just, you know, see where you go. That, that's, that's awesome. Man. Yeah. Thanks. Man. I love Gary Vee. Um, the first person I made a song about, like it was Kobe Bryant. I wrote lyrics about that, but I, would say I look up to a lot of rappers, a lot of people in my life, but Gary Vee is like one of the top, top, top people where I just had to write a song about all the things he taught me. And the reason why I live my life the way I live my life, you know? Um, so it was really cool. I, I'm excited for you to hear that song. And then, um, yeah, man, that's cool. Well, you just you just uh, came out with one song, right? It was um, you just released it. Which one was it? Yesterday, I released Anti Dis. Yes. Before yeah. that was summertime. I was listening to it, and I only got like halfway through it, and then we started our meeting. So <laughs> I gotta finish. Oh, that. Anti Dis? Were you listening to Anti Dis? Yeah. Yeah. 
okay. That's that's half English, half Hindi. Yeah, I was I was wondering. I I, I couldn't tell. I mean, obviously, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll finish listening to it once we get this over. <laughs> yeah, there's like a huge um, like a death scene brewing up in India right now, and it's like you know how in the '90s, Tupac and Biggie and all that stuff was going on, East Coast, West Coast rap. Yeah. So um, at exact same things happening right now in India. Wow. Huge, huge rappers getting into diss fights, like diss battles and stuff like that. And, and, but now, luckily, it's at the end of that era and people are starting to understand, like, we shouldn't be just doing, like, dissing each other. Yeah. Because what happens is, like, a lot of small rappers, like, even, even, like, people like me, it, like, all these rappers that I see who are not famous at all, they start dissing other rappers just to get them fame, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's like, stop doing that. And, and that's just kind of spreading hate. And so my whole song is based on that message. And I use like a bunch of Indian rappers names and famous quotes and phrases and like choruses that they've done before to make my song, which is like a creative way to like kind of put all my energy that I listen to like all these rappers. I listen to, let's say Drake and Meek Mill, right? Like, for example, I listen to both and like, if they get into a fight. I feel pressured not to post a Meek Mill song or Drake song because the other is going to get offended or their other fan base is going to get offended. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what was going on. And I kind of smashed that beef by saying anti this and like, I like both of you guys and I listen to both of you and nothing's yeah. going to stop. This to it. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I think it's the drinking dude. I keep forgetting my question. By the way, what are you drinking? <laughs> I'm drinking uh bourbon with a little bit of a uh, Coke. It's nice. Mm. Yeah, a little nice. Bit yeah, cheers. Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic? Yeah. Is that what you always drink? Huh? Is that what you always drink? Um, I like variety. I, I like to change things up. I'll have like a gin and tonic one day. I'll have like a Henny and Coke one day. Um, I'll have scotch sometimes. Oh, and yeah. then so you hit it right on the button there. Henny and Coke's my drink. But my brother has yeah, a, brought Coke. this uh, bottle over a few weeks back. So finishing it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Henny's Henny dope. Yeah, well, you know, is there something that you want to tell the viewers uh, about you or any type of message that you want to give out? Um, so the reason why I do what I do, my, like I said, my brand is motion. The only thing I want to leave behind at the end of the day, and I talk about like death a lot in my songs, like going away. I talk about time. I talk about legacy. Um, I would say my legacy is motion. Leave your, like, like Kobe Bryant's legacy is black mamba, mamba mentality, go to the yeah. gym, shoot as much as you can, practice, work as hard as you can, work harder than anybody else. Um, that's one person that I looked at, the Nipsey Hustle the marathon, right? Life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Just keep running, keep going no matter what. That's my thing. My legacy I want to leave behind is motion, stay in motion. Don't ever stop. Um, one achievement only leads to the other. Don't ever get satisfied and settled into life and just put your feet up on the table and watch TV right. and do nothing all day, all night, you know? Right. Work hard because you can always take something a little bit more serious, always. You can always take something more seriously. Like my music, this quarantine made me take it super, super seriously. And I'm like releasing an album. I'm, I'm setting up my websites, my logos, my brand name and everything. So when I do go back to work, I have stuff set up. I have songs that are that I've already made that are released in 2021. I'm working on halfway through my second album is almost done, you know? So I like to release a song only when I have the next five done already. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the motion that I'm in and I just want to keep moving forward. That's it. So if you're in dental school, medical school, or you know, doing something that you don't want right now, maybe just be grateful that you're in that situation because one day you'll be able to lift yourself up out of that situation because of that situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? That's a great message, dude. And, and it's dope what you're doing for yourself. You know, I'll, I'll definitely uh, let my, my viewers know. And uh, can you let them know how to find you, how to reach you, how to uh, see what, what kind of things you're doing? Yeah. So all my music is available on all streaming platforms under the artist name AKB. That's my artist name. And then if you type in Indian Dentist Rapper anywhere online, Google, YouTube, you'll be able to find my channel. It's Indian Dentist Rapper. And please do subscribe hit the bell because I'm releasing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I think we're running out of time here because uh, Zoom only allowed me 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'll see you. I was thinking, man. man. We got to catch up. Maybe do another one of these meetings. You know, I got time, so yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, man. So awesome, dude. Hey, cheers. And you have a good one night. And I'll see you again. Hey, thank you for your time, man. Yeah, thank you too. All Keep right, doing man. your thing. Yeah. <laughs>